Dial Point's a family-owned vineyard from uh, dating back to the late 70s. It was some of the first private uh, vineyard plantings in Marlborough, uh, the first being 1979. But we didn't start making wine till 2002. So the vineyards are very, very old for the region. You know, Marlborough's a, a young industry. Uh, New Zealand's a young industry. But uh, the vines we have are old for, for Marlborough, but uh, the wine we've also had our 10th anniversary in bottle as well. So we really focus on four wines, and what we're trying to do is simplify the winemaking process down to what we consider key elements uh, to make good wine and that really comes down to uh, everything being estate grown uh, we like to control our own destiny uh, we crop very very low uh, we hand pick everything and we press very very gently so for us it's all about getting purity of flavor and really letting the vineyard speak for themselves uh, less is more i guess in this instance but um, we make four wines, Sauvignon Blanc, uh, Section 94, Chardonnay and Pinot Noir. Section 94 is, uh, well it's a bit of a Sauvignon Blanc with a twist really. It's as regards, in regards to the, the traditional style which is tank fermented, uh, this wine sees 18 months in old French oak barrels. Uh, Section 94 is a, an old survey title that was given in the 1800s by our, by our early settlers. So uh, the vines are planted on section 94. So it is effectively a single site vineyard, but it's more to reflect the, the style rather than uh, where it's from. I'd like to keep a bit of a synergy with the property and what we do. So we felt it necessary to um, give this wine a little bit of a different name uh, to separate the tank fermented style from this style because they are very, very different. Uh, so you notice there's no uh, Sauvignon Blanc written on the front of the label. Uh, it is on the back, but we, we do that so people don't uh, get confused with the different styles. But um, this wine is is uh, basically all about evolution in barrels. So, I mean, we grow it exactly the same as the tank fermented style at 7.5 tonnes per hectare. Um, the average norm for Marlborough is around 12.5 to 14, so we are very, very low. Uh, and then we, we hand pick it and then press directly to barrel, and it undergoes a uh, uninoculated ferment so it's all native yeast 100% and uh, it's in there for 18 months so really the key it's all about that evolution in barrel imparting complexity and texture and it's time on lees so it is full solids contact in barrel so you know a result is we do get slight reductive characters but um, it is controlled reduction um, but we does get a bit of vintage variation so the 2011 which would we'd consider a pretty funky vintage, um, but whereas the 2012 was much more uh, probably integrated uh, earlier. So um, they are wines that are they're made to age, so they're going at least 10 years. And it's uh, really just a bit of a point of difference really. It's a um, brilliant food wine, uh, it's got brilliant minerality, and it really is a reflection of the vineyard and, and the clay soils that, it, that it's on. And uh, as, it, as it develops, you start to get more floral characters. So it actually starts to appear younger as it gets older, which is quite fun for Sauvignon Blanc. Chardonnay is one of those varieties that are easy to make, but it's hard to grow well and hard to make well. And it's a, uh, it's a variety we're very, very passionate about. I think uh, New Zealand Chardonnay is, is coming on along um, with great strides. And you know, for this wine here, we're, we're trying to steer away from the uh, big buttery, heavy creamy style, uh, again trying to embrace uh, what the soil can deliver and the clonal mix. Uh, I suppose the important thing is now, you know, the oldest vines in here are around about 33 years old. So we're looking at an average vine age of around 23 years. So for us it's, a, it's that combination of uh, the clones, which is Mendoza and B95. 70% uh, of this wine is Mendoza. Now it's a notoriously low cropping clone Mendoza, but um, it gives fantastic acidity and I think that's really important when it comes to uh, malolactic fermentation and, and holding it um, through full malo. Uh, but, uh, and then the 95 which gives, tends to give us that sort of meaty sort of richness uh, to the wine as well. So combined, you know, we're around about four and a half tons per hectare which I think, uh, you know, if I, if I convert it in my head it's around about 35 hectolitres. Uh, so again, it's low cropping, it's on a mixture of hill and flat land, uh, but again, it's off those silty clay soils. So, you know, all our wines tend to have that mineral, citrus, grapefruit character, um, as to oppose more sort of passion fruit, 
and um, stone fruit, which you can get off of more gravel soils in, in the north side of Marlborough. Um, but again, effectively, it's, it's made very similar to, to section 94. Uh, we're hand picking it, it goes straight into barrel, and it spends 18 months there, and that's uninoculated as well, and that gets full time on lees too. So again, you know, that's, that's a slightly um, style of uh, a little bit of reduction that comes through. Uh, but we do see that through full malolactic fermentation, so we see a little bit of that soaked up through that process. And um, again, it, it, it's, it sort of gives a yeasty, nutty character that we really, really enjoy. And as it develops, you start to get a richness to it that's not uh, sort of affected by the wood. Um, and they're developing very, very well. So there's just 15% new oak in this wine. Uh, we're really quite paranoid about new oak around uh, around all our wines, but the Chardonnay in particular, uh, particularly with New World Chardonnay, because I think uh, too much new oak can um, uh, overpower the flavours, particularly as it starts to age. So, you know, it's it's a uh, a wine that we're really happy with. Uh, we're always, uh, you know, trying to uh, do better. By no means are we haven't got it perfect, but uh, we'll enjoy uh, wines from. The white wines of Burgundy. You know, Marlborough Pinot Noir is again is, is making huge strides. I think uh, it's very very exciting. Uh, you know, we tend to f focus on three varieties. We we think uh, Sauvignon, Chardonnay, and Pinot uh, Marlborough can do it incredibly well. Uh, again, the vine age here we're getting up to sort of that 31, 32 years old with again an average vine age of around 22, 23 years, um, and it's it's a wine that we. Uh, not trying to extract too much, uh, we're, we're sort of paranoid about over extraction. Uh, again, it's from a, a mixture of hill sites and flatlands, uh, the close plantings, and really, again, a similar cropping level of four and a half tons per hectare. So we're looking very, very low, all hand packed, and it also all goes over a sorting table. So uh, you know, we do sacrifice volume to make sure that the quality that we're getting is uh, is paramount and, and top class um, and again you know it, it's a style that it sees 18 months in barrel as well and 40% new oak and it's 100% native yeast. Uh, we don't find any of our wines um, and the pinot is uh, not filtered as well uh, um, yet and uh, what we do is uh, really um, we're trying to look for that red berry character. I think uh, that cherry sort of violet character is is what's, uh, very Marlborough. Um, but we do get those underlying sort of spicy notes in the wine as well. And you know, all the barrels are from Francois Ferrer and, and, and Burgundy, so we do tend to get a little bit of that sort of nice underlying clove character um, in the wine, which we, which we really enjoy. But uh, you know, we do basically goes into open open top fermenters. Uh, can sit in there for around 25 days and uh, we punch down twice a day so we're only once in the morning and once at night so we're not trying to over extract it too much and it does get about five to six days cold soak before uh, fermentation starts and then we uh, after that it's really only left uh, post fermentation on skins for about um, a day or two and then uh, pressed off it into barrel and then it, it, we really don't do much to it uh, so again, it's, it's sort of that simplifying the process down and, and not trying to do too much to it. Um, we, we just sort of let the wines do their thing and, and hopefully uh, the end result is, is a positive one.